now here at the curb you can we'll start here and work our way back you can kind of see that we're on a pretty good hill and we'll, when we get around back you'll see more of that problem we're going to discharge it right out here at the curb you can see there's all kinds of markings here cable and they've almost got over half of that trench dug already took the sod off down in some red clay gerald's found some kind of irrigation pipe right there we take our time with those and you can see that gas line that yellow marking running through here but it took the sod off set it off to the side have our plastic over here we're going to connect these uh, lines that come out of the crawl space we're going to connect that dehumidifier um, you can see this, I'll show you that inside. They've got a really good dehumidifier. A lot of people ask me, what's the best dehumidifier? I'm gonna show you that in just a second. And we'll also do that condensation drip and connect that into the line as well. Looking good. A Couple of cat spaces we'll put on this line. You can see how they come around the back and you can really see what's happening here with the yard. Neighbor's yard is dripping all that water. I say dripping, it's pouring all of that water across here. And you can see that it just, if you look at the sod carefully, they just can't get it to grow. You see that? It's just so much water coming across this area. So the reason that we're doing all this yard drain work is to help protect this crawl space. But while we're here, let's take a look inside and talk about sealing vents and encapsulation with dehumidifiers. So we get a lot of questions and comments um, about crawl spaces and encapsulation and also for dehumidifiers or should you seal the vents? You should you have a closed system? Um, you know, we've been doing this 30 plus years and encapsulation is great. It's something that I'm not a big believer in. We do encapsulate, um, but it's something I'm not a big believer in unless you have something that you want to have create storage with. In this crawl space, for example, let's take a look at this. It's kind of dark in here, but you can see nice, looking really good all around, no efflorescence, really dry crawl space. What's making it dry? If I can get you enough light to see it, let me open this door. Maybe you can see that. What makes this crawl space dry is not only the drainage, the footer tile that's been installed here, but also that we've sealed the vents. You see that? They're sealed. This keeps that moisture out. When you have a vent that's open and or you have a fan on that vent trying to control your humidity, you're making it worse. And this is a great example of that. You can see they're all sealed all the way around. This is super dry here. I mean, just rock hard, rock hard all the way around. This is a great crawl space, great job. And this all discharges out um, right over there, comes out. They're gonna hook all that up to the line as well. Beautiful. Is it encapsulated? No, and you can see there's no mold here. Insulation's not dropping. There is absolutely no sign of moisture here at all. So the combination of a good dehumidifier, this is a Santa Fe Compact. We don't sell these. And this guy ordered this online and all you do is plug it in. It's not like anything major. You can see the light or the cord going over wherever it goes, right up here. It just plugs in. It's not like it's uh, hardwired or anything like that. And it, the, the combination of the dehumidifier, a good footer tile drainage system, this one's gravity. There's no sump pump. It just runs right out through the, through the wall. We call that a core. And then finally to seal up those vents. There's no reason to encapsulate this at all. This is super dry and it works great. Just following the white line, nice clean path as it comes through. A couple of catch basins, and you know, catch basin placement is pretty important. As you look at this area, even though it looks like it's all pouring towards the house, there's actually a little valley right here. And so the water comes down, it comes right down through here. It'll drop into that catch basin, go into that four inch line and send it all the way out front. And you can see that downspout this is picking up a tremendous amount of roof up here. Tremendous amount. All of that water has been pouring down this direction as well. And you might ask, why don't we go around this side and send it out to the street? Well, to start with, it's really uphill along that side of the house. But more than that, 
we can run our pipe around the back of the house since we're putting a yard drain in that natural valley and it's much more cost effective to do so. You can see he's at a perfect depth it's coming through there. I'm going to go ahead and jump in here as well, do a few feet, <laughs> do a little section here. Okay, we've already removed the sod and you can see we've got a nice straight trench for us to excavate. However, I did find an irrigation box. So I'm a little bit concerned because if that irrigation system is right down through this trench, we're going to have to move all okay, of this. Okay, so as you're digging, sometimes <laughs> you're going to find a line, some wires. This is irrigation control right here. And of course, they don't mark that. Locators don't locate that. And of course, we've cut all the sod off and it's running right through our trench. And there's an irrigation box down here. We thought we had missed it, thought it ran through here, but unfortunately, it's right in our trench. So what do you do? Well, you're gonna have to move over your trench. It's just that simple, or you're gonna cut that line. So what I'm gonna do is explore it right here to see if it's in this trench, and then we can make a decision on what we're gonna do. So sure enough, we found, you know, I found this other line right here, and you can see here's the uh, control wire. Usually control wires run in the same trench as the pipe itself. So we're gonna, I'm gonna move this line over to right alongside the, the edge of this trench. We shouldn't have to cut any more sod, but it's definitely running right through here. So these guys have pretty much got this trench all done and it's actually beginning to snow. And as I said um, earlier, this really reminds me of when I first started up in Columbus, Ohio, and we would dig throughout the winter, um, snow covered yards, it didn't matter. You know, we'd bring the trencher out there. We'd just go ahead and buzz right through that. The trencher cuts through pretty good stuff. Snow, ice, even the frozen ground. Much better than the excavator does, by the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, this snow in here in Charlotte, once a year, twice a year here. And if you go back through our videos, you'll see that a couple of videos where we've been working in the snow here this time of year, pretty normal. Let's go in the crawl space. I wanted to show you that. Uh, so it's right at around noon. These guys have got this trench ready to install, just a little bit more to clean out, hooking up all the downspouts, coming all the way back around, just cleaning out the trench back there in the back. So this entire trench was dug within just a couple of hours. Even in, in this hard rock clay, they, they knocked this out so quick. And you can do the same thing. It might take you all day, but you can do the same thing. Catch basin placement, especially in a valley, we want to make sure of a couple things. First of all, make sure that you put your adapters on and get them good and tight on both sides. Very important. Remember, this is a valley in the middle of the backyard. Water runs through that valley. We want to make sure that our catch basin at the beginning of the line is going to collect as much water as possible. Next, we want to make sure that that catch basin is relatively square, level. You can set your level both directions and make sure that you're about maybe a half an inch below grade so water drops directly into that basin. So remember, we're running our downspouts through this line and therefore it is not a French drain. This is all solid pipe. Water is going to go through the pipe into that catch basin and then it's carried away on the other side. Make sure that as you set this catch basin, think about aesthetics. Try to keep that catch basin parallel to the back of your house. It will look much better rather than being offset or tilted a little bit. You can make this look really good with just a little bit of effort. This soil is so stable that once we set this catch basin, it's not going to move for an eternity. It's going to stay there forever. Easy to clean out. You pop off the lid, use a garden hose, wash it out. Installing your downspout drain. We are going from a 3x4 aluminum downspout to a round 4 inch corrugated pipe. So you can see there is an adapter right at the bottom of the downspout. This is solid pipe. It will not lose any water. We do not run perforated pipe in this system at all. Remember that the back of this house, that gutter, that roof, it's putting off thousands of gallons with every one inch rainfall. We need to collect that water and move it all the way around the house through that catch basin and out to the street. 
make sure that your pipe is very straight as it comes down that wall. Very important for aesthetics. Now we're laying the pipe to the first catch basin. Some people call this a distribution box. That's fine. It's a catch basin. And the catch basin is designed to collect surface water. As water comes across the ground, it drops into the catch basin and is carried away by the pipe. Make this connection, measure it, cut it, and snap it into the adapter of the catch basin. Relatively simple. These things that we're showing you, they're very easy for the do-it-yourselfer to do. The hardest part of all of this is the excavation. And finally, don't forget about aesthetics. Line that catch basin up so it's parallel with the back of the house. Let me walk around here and you can see. Make it parallel with the house and it will look so much better in your yard. So get your pipe started, cut, cut straight through. Now you can make a connection. You just snap it in place. What's nice about corrugated is that it does compress. So if it's a little bit long, you can easily fit this pipe. But if it's a little bit short, you've got a problem. So they're covering up the trench. Like I said, this goes really quick. Once that pipe's installed, this goes very quickly. And plastic was laid out. You can see just a little bit of raking. These big clumps of soil, they're gonna break those up. And then we're gonna actually take that and use it over here on the side of the house. So all of this excess, you can see all the clumps. They're going to break that up. And we're going to use it here along this wall. And you can see the erosion that's going along this wall right here. You can see it all around the bed, how that water pours through there. And you can actually see the algae building up on this wall. So we're going to grade that off and help force that water away from that foundation. Okay, let's go ahead and summarize why we did this and how this is going to help. During a big rainfall, this gutter on the back of the house collects so much water, truly thousands of gallons every one inch rainfall, comes down those downspouts. There was no downspout drain, and all of this water poured directly up against the foundation of the house. The downspout drain is the most important drain in the rainwater drainage system. Without it, the water from your roof will end up in your crawl space or your basement. Sometimes you can send the downspout drain easily out to the front. In this instance, because we've got water coming from the neighbor's yard and there is a swale already created here in the backyard, which holds water when it rains, we can easily send the downspout drain back and around with catch basins to collect all that water from the neighbors and send it out to the street. We also connected the core from the footer pipe in the crawl space as well as the condensation line and the dehumidifier to our system. The combination of these three things will keep this crawl space and foundation secure and dry for many, many years to come. Remember, your home is one of your largest investments, perhaps the largest that you'll ever make in your life. You need to make sure that that foundation stays secure and dry. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.